It is unattractive health uh, rights. Uh, what do you mean by this? Well, this uh, is to be able to make sure that we do not get uh, involved in the euthanism of calling a particular field a positive path, the necrodactic health. And uh, many of those that you mentioned, Your Honor, are embedded into the reproductive health, which we, we know, number one, many of these things you mentioned are unconstitutional to start with. And is that based on your Bible? Uh, it is, of course, uh, being a Catholic, and I answer as a Catholic, uh, we believe that uh, life is precious, and it starts at the very conception when the uh, sperm meets the eggs of the woman. As many faithful believe, not only Catholics. So how about divorce? Why are you against divorce? We believe, uh, Your Honor, that uh, divorce, divorce is a, uh, an effect of certain items that happen in society. Wherein, again, uh, if you look at our 10 million OFWs, many of them are married men and women. And de facto, we have divorced involuntarily and we feel that uh, to, to, to have divorce as uh, legalized this will just make things so easy and destroy the structure the moral fiber of our country not to mention the uh, source of income that is saving the Philippines in this economic crisis are the OFWs if this is started to be destroyed by way of destroying the families by divorce we believe that it will not bring any good but more bad but it is not a fact, is it not a fact that uh, we have this legal separation? The legal separation, of course, is uh, allowed by law, but it is not necessarily meaning that you are divorced. Precisely, but you are preventing these legal separatists to get married. And uh, are you not depriving them of the rights uh, to, uh, to get married again? Uh, because they cannot uh, uh, unite and... Uh, there is a reconcilable uh, difference between this uh, couple. So it would be better if they should uh, give an absolute right to divorce so that they can get married uh, for this young time. If uh, I may answer that, Your Honor, that uh, divorce is one of the worst things that can happen to a married life. And there are many avenues that are open. Not the least of which is to be able to receive counseling. When two people try to resolve it by themselves, they will always look at it from the point of view of, I am right and you are wrong. Now, if divorce were to be made, and we see this in, in developed countries where divorce is legalized, it did not stop the issues with regard to family, men and women fighting. It just made it more complicated. But are, but are we not also encouraging uh, this uh, couple who has uh, been legally separated to commit sin? Because the mere fact that they cannot uh, uh, be uh, united in their being, uh, then the decision one should uh, look for another to satisfy their needs. Well, Your Honor, uh, Rather than giving them absolute right to divorce so that they can get married so that they would not be committing sin. Yes, Your Honor. Um, there is a natural... There is a natural... Uh, desire for uh, adult men and women, especially those that have been married, that once they are separated, uh, not necessarily even through divorce, but even uh, by way of being a, an OFW worker, these are the things, uh, Your Honor, that we are really very much uh, concerned about. The divorce, obviously, is going to be uh, attempted because many sectors are pushing for it. But we feel that uh, to make it uh, an open, a wide gate open for 10, about 10 million OFWs who are married, we just make it easy to destroy the family. No, because divorce, uh, you know, divorce is only done by exception. If uh, there is no reconcilable uh, differences, they cannot reconcile anymore, then the best way is to divorce so that these two can get married for the second time rather than having this legal separation where you are encouraging them to commit sin because they will find uh, another one to satisfy their needs so i think the uh, advocates of uh, this divorce is to save the couple from committing sin well uh, you not agree with me um i 
respectfully disagree, Your Honor. Uh, I believe that uh, while one is while one is a child of God, one is capable to reconcile. Now, how about uh, uh, are you not also uh, against uh, the existence of these uh, karma product persons? Or is that that? Um, Your Honor, uh, my reply to that is uh, I know of uh, persons who have the same sex attraction. And uh, this situation, uh, we have to respect. What we do not agree to is the immorality that happens when same sex unions or affairs are undertaken. Now, uh, just like many married men and women, we call them, let's say, the straight, we're all subject as well to temptations of immorality. And this does not make us any different from those who have same-sex attractions. As a matter of fact, there's a group called Courage Philippines who helps same-sex attraction persons to remain uh, to remain chaste in spite of their internal problems of having attraction to the same sex. So again, um, sex seems to be something that uh, many would like to look into us. We can just close one eye or turn around from it. Anything that is immoral will not bring out anything good. Uh, precisely, uh, Mr. Lutis, but uh, we do not believe uh, that uh, being a ladlan or a, uh, a Christian is uh, not involved but uh, acquired through environment. Uh, may, may it I is acquired, not uh, an uninborn? No. Well, um, Your Honor, I believe that all of us who were born were born male or female. Okay. There is no love life. It is the environment. I mean to say, uh, they were not born that way. Uh, there, there is no scientific evidence to prove that one has been predisposed by genetics to become uh, to become attracted to the same sex. And it is acquired uh, only by uh, because of the surrounding? Well, because of media particularly, and uh, we know very well that many of the uh, so-called gays and lesbians are very famous in media. And uh, this has an effect also on the families and the youth that we want to to uh, defend. Now, will you not be also an advocate in order to uh, uh, prevent these people from becoming a nightlife? You should encourage them that if they are men, they should stay as being a man rather than uh, 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 doing uh, the, uh, what is uh, being done by feminine. Yes, Your Honor, we actually do that in our movement, in our pro-life coalition. As a matter of fact, just recently, although we were a small group, uh, we we uh, protested in a silent and prayerful way the two concerts of Lady Gaga in the Philippines. Because as if we are insulting God, God has created men or women, and He never created love life. That's why uh, the Sodom and Gomorrah was uh, destroyed by God because of the presence of love life. We, uh, we agree to that, uh, Your Honor, that God is perfect. He will not create imperfection. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. Precisely. So the role of a man should not be taken also by a woman. That's correct, Your Honor. Because if the role of a man is taken by a role by, by a woman, there is a total eclipse. Am I right? <laughs> You're right, Your Honor. And if there is total eclipse, there is death. Correct, Your Honor. That's darkness. Uh, in that book, in life, uh, you are in effect uh, uh, against this, uh, I mean, uh, well, we do not want to uh, we don't want to increase further what is happening now, and by way of uh, it penetrating the family uh, environment, especially by media, uh, we hope that uh, this will not be misconstrued that we are against or we are uh, we are mad or angry at the. Uh, at anybody who has a uh, gay or lesbian tendencies. What we are against are the immoral acts that go into so many ways, into the radio, in newspapers, in billboards, 
TV in entertainment. Uno pasar against, uh, of course, immorality, pornography, abortion. Yes, these are uh, general statements, matter of statements already. But uh, what particular, uh, well, I'm interested in what particular laws you intend to present to preserve life? Well, the, um, the, 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 the long term, the long term address so that all of these things will not enter the home is to strengthen the family. And when you strengthen the family, you strengthen the moral fiber of the family. And uh, we have identified family in general, but more specifically, the OFW families, especially when mothers and fathers are not around, they are the most vulnerable and they become the most dysfunctional families. So we feel that as a pro-life party list, this is a focus area for us. Of course, we also want at some point in the future that our government will be able to bring back 10 million workers to be able to reunite with their families rather than us continuously trying to work on exporting our workers at a big cost to family. So aside from the youth, professionals, you are also, your sector, uh, would like to represent also the OFWs, is that correct? Yes, yes, Your Honor, because the OFWs are the one, if not the biggest, a major issue that are dysfunctional because of the families that have no parents whatsoever. By the way, your constituency is national in scope? Or it is uh, national, Your Honor. It is national. Because we all have chapters all over the Philippines. We have, Your Honor, uh, chapters all over the Philippines and we have uh, agreements with the different uh, civic groups as well that uh, represent us in, in, in most of the, uh, most of the sub cities and towns in, in the country. And when was this organized, uh, Mr. Witness? Pardon? Your organization, when was this organized? Normally, about uh, a month or so before the deadline, we were still a movement then. Uh, we wanted to uh, see how we would be able to uh, do this properly. We, we, we moved to uh, talk to other parts of the coalition, the pro-life coalition. So, it, in other words, it was only organized just recently. Just recently, Your Honor, yeah. although as a Steve movement... Steve did like of uh, filing yes. the yes, uh, petition for... Uh, yeah. Yes, Your Honor. As a matter of fact, uh, even in the previous uh, elections, we have always been attempting to put the family uh, structure as our marginalized area. Mm -hmm. But you have not for one organized? We have only been a movement so far, Your Honor, for the past years. Uh, movement. Uh, but uh, you you were only organized uh, when, particularly? I have to ask you my employer the specific date. I'll just do it. It's not showing. Shall I do this? Mr. Witness, I refer you to page one, your judicial affidavit. I need a specific date, Your Honor. If I may interpose this as a redirect, in redirect for your honors, I can ask just to clarify your question. You mentioned you remembered. Question three, since when have you been the president of petitioner? And if you can read your answer, Mr. Witness. Since inception and institution in February 2010. No, no. Yes. Not 2011, sorry. 2011. Can you clarify, Mr. Witness, why you mentioned its earliest inception and institution? And uh, why do you consider that as the date when you... Are because these were the dates where we started to form what was called a uh, pro-life coalition, which was supposed to be uh, the, the movement that would put together something that would uh, represent us in, uh, in legislation. And so that's where it started, Your Honor. What do you mean coalition? You are coalition with other organizations? No, originally, uh, Your Honor, we were a coalition, a movement. So you separated from the movement? No, we are still part of that, but uh, many of them have uh, other advocacies as well within the full gamut of family and life. So there are inconsistencies in your advocacy, we are, we are you separated from them. We are consistent, we just take specialization. Like in Pro-Life Philippines, where I am also the president, we do a lot of counseling for uh, 
for young women and uh, other types of uh, problems that relate to the family. Okay, Council, uh, we are through with this witness.